So a couple days ago, there was this reputation for what the Switch is becoming from a person, a member of Suda51, that said that the Nintendo Switch is punk. And uh, there's a lot of uh, things you could take away from that. But Reggie fils was asked specifically about this punk reputation that Suda51 gave to the Nintendo Switch. Here is what he responded with. We're constantly looking to disrupt the industry. We're constantly asking ourselves, what can we do that's differentiated, that the consumer wants but doesn't know they want? One thing I love about our company is we put innovation first. We are always looking to take that risk. And this is something I wanted to talk about in a broader sense because Nintendo has this reputation with a lot of people, specifically with Nintendo fans, of being an innovator. And I'd like to strip that away a bit. And I don't really think that Nintendo is this big innovative company that people think they are. Now, I do think they are risk takers. They definitely are risk takers. They definitely, at least since the Wii era and on, are looking for that next big hit product, right? That They're always trying to release this product that people don't know they want. You know, the Wii with the motion controls, people didn't know they wanted that, and then it happened. Switch, people maybe didn't realize they wanted a hybrid system, they got it, and now it's selling well. So I understand that perspective. Uh, part of this response, uh, I, I didn't mention it. He mentioned something about how people didn't know that they wanted 3D, and sometimes they bring technology out too soon, and they bring it back, and they mention, oh, Virtual Boy, but then, hey, we did the 3D and the 3DS. Honestly, the 3D and the 3DS is not why the 3DS sold. Sorry, Nintendo, you need to kind of get that out of your brain. I mean, you, you literally have a 2DS and 2DS XL out there. Because, I mean, let's just be honest. 3D is not the selling point of the Nintendo 3DS. It's portable gaming and the content that's actually the selling point of the 3DS. Plus, it's affordable. Um, in fact, most people I know don't even bother with the 3D. So I'm not saying that there aren't people that do. I think the 3D is neat. I just don't think it's this key essential selling point of the system. It's more of an aside, kind of like HD rumble on the Switch. But getting back into the main conversation, I want to strip away this whole innovative aspect because I don't really think that uh, Nintendo innovates in a way that people people view innovation as, right? To, to most people, innovating is doing something brand new that no one has ever done before. And Nintendo has arguably, beyond the D-pad, never really done anything that they were the first people to do it or the first people to do it well. The touch screens existed and good touch screens existed before the DS, but Nintendo popularized the usage of touch screens in video games. Uh, motion controls existed before <laughs> before the Wii. In fact, like the PlayStation 2, I think, had the, the, the PlayStation I and had, that had full range of motion controls. It was very similar to the Kinect. And yeah, uh, there were also motion wands and everything that existed before it as well. But Nintendo popularized motion controls in gaming, which is still persisting to this day. Uh, motion controls are still one of the primary and one of the best ways to experience games in VR. Because if you're going to put yourself in a world while well, using an Xbox controller or whatever works fine, it's a lot better with motion control. So Nintendo kind of paved the path for motion controls becoming part of virtual reality, like it or not. And it's kind of odd that Nintendo with the Virtual Boy uh, isn't one of the companies that's at the forefront of trying to push virtual reality technology, but that's a conversation for another day. But Nintendo, the innovator, is more so Nintendo the smart thinker. It's taking, they're, they're the masters of taking existing technology that someone else has already created and implementing it in gaming at the right time. And they don't always get this right. Um, introducing a tablet to a home console in the Wii U, uh, Nintendo still thinks that that was an innovation, just one that didn't catch on. I, I still don't see how that innovated anything. Um, other systems were already doing things like Xbox Glass and everything. There, there were these these other ways to do it, the Vita and PSP were already kind of doing it better and you still had two separate devices that you could play individual games on. It just, it was just a mess. The Wii U was a hot mess in terms of its approach to its innovative feature. But Nintendo, I think, is also kind of the masters of gimmicks. I, I think that's a better way to put it. Nintendo's never going to publicly say that because it's gimmicks have this negative connotation around it. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. Everything at one point was a gimmick until it got popular and people started copying it. 
Um, the D-pad was a gimmick when it came out on the NES. And actually, before on the NES, when they had it on uh, <laughs> all, all those, uh, the Game & Watch and all that stuff. So, like, the D-pad itself was a big gimmick that caught on. Um, shoulder buttons were gimmicks that caught on. Motion controls were gimmicks that caught on. I mean, th that's kind of how... The, that's kind of how everything works. Every great idea, every great innovative concept uh, was a gimmick at one point. And then how consumers and how people used it is what did ultimately determined if it wasn't a gimmick. A wheel. I mean, you think about it. The invention of the wheel was a total gimmick at the time that caught on. And for obvious reasons, uh, became a mainstay and isn't considered a gimmick any longer. It hasn't been a gimmick for thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years. So... When you enter into the process of, of looking at how Nintendo approaches the video game industry, I don't think that they're like this huge innovative company. I know they think that they're a big innovative company, but what they really are are a company that tries to recognize what people in gaming are being forgotten about and how can they target them. Uh, the Wii was one of those brilliant machines that it wasn't that they innovative and changed the industry with their popularizing the motion controls. What they what they did is they recognized that there was this big gap in the video game industry where you had here's the console gamers and the PC gamers. You know, yeah, they had their little fighting, the but but they're up here and everyone else is forgotten about. Controls were getting complicated, PCs were complicated, and at the end of the day, there were just this huge swath of age groups and consumers that were completely forgotten about because gaming had gotten too complex for new people to pick it up or older people to pick it up. It was just a really hard thing to do. Trying to teach it, you know, an elderly person to use a controller that's got 16 different buttons and two sticks and a D-pad on top of that is nearly impossible. Um, I'm not saying it's not possible, it's just very difficult to do if they've never played games before. Same is true, you know, with young kids. My daughter, you know, you guys saw in our one episode of uh, Prime Family that, you know, she struggled using the sticks because it is hard for a kid to wrap their hands around all those different buttons and trying to memorize it when they're that young. I'm not saying it can't be done. I'm sure many of you guys out there have kids that have mastered the controls, but obviously... Um, the point I was making is that there was just a huge gap in Nintendo recognized that they simplified the controls, made them easy to understand, and that was the brilliance in their decision with Wii. It was an affordable system that simplified the controls that invited a whole bunch of people in, into the gaming you know, atmosphere that previously were left out, and uh, obviously smart devices kind of overtook that, that market, right? You know, phones and tablets, uh, they kind of simplify controls even more down to touch screens and you know that obviously popularized gaming to a whole different level in a whole different space but yeah and nintendo kind of came back with the 3ds which i don't think was really that innovative 3d technology without glasses it has existed for a while and while it was never popularized in a gaming device again it knows why the gaming device sold like the switch is selling because it's portable console gaming on the go the 3DS didn't sell because it had glasses-free 3D. Maybe that's why some people, early adopters, you know, went in like me. Uh, I didn't actually buy it because of that. I bought it because I wanted to play Nintendo games. But um, that's probably why some early adopters bought it because they were really impressed by the 3D technology. So fast forward to the Switch. And I don't... The, there's nothing the Switch is doing that hasn't been done before. In fact, the Tegra X1 itself was used in a very similar product created by NVIDIA themselves. Now, obviously, it didn't slide into a dock in your TV, but it could be hooked up to a TV. Uh, and then they eventually did, like, the PS Vita route where they had, like, a portable version. Then they had, like, a TV box. They still sell the TV box version that you can plug into your TV. Uh, and that's fine, but what Nintendo did is they recognized that now the issue with gaming in 2017, or even back in 2016 and 2015, is that you still had all these people up here. You had all the people in between playing games on their phones. But what you didn't have were the people that were kind of stuck between console gaming and phone gaming. And those people are the kind of people that they used to game. They used to play console games. They got older and they found that they had less time to do it, less time to sit in front of their TVs. And while they might game on their phones, they're not completely satisfied with some of those experiences. They still long for the days of full console gaming. Nintendo recognized that there is this, just this gap in between where people just aren't happy. And someone needed to fill that gap. Nintendo came along with a hybrid system and said, look, you can still play this on your big screen TV when you get the chance to. But you could take it on the go and it's going to be the same experience. And we could argue about the power differences and how it's more powerful with dodgeable. None of that really matters in the general appeal of the Switch. It's not like they put it on the box 
more powerful, well docked. That's not a selling point of the system. It's the idea of taking console eleven gaming on the go and being able to play those games anywhere. And that's why third parties are actually hopping on board as well because they recognize that there's this crowd of people out there that really want console gaming on the go because they don't have the time they used to growing up playing games. So it's a very brilliant thing. And I feel like that's what Nintendo is really the master at. It's not so much creating this innovative technology. I mean, maybe HD Rumble, that that's more, probably the most innovative thing they've added this generation. But it's more so the recognition of who in gaming is being left out and why, and let's serve that audience. That's where I give Nintendo all the love in the world, because that's where the risk-taking comes in, because they can think that audience exists, and they could have released a Switch, and it could have tanked because that audience just, it might exist, but it's not big enough to support a whole platform. Uh, and you kind of saw that with Wii U. Whatever audience they targeted, I have no idea, um, as they advertised it in really weird ways, um, but whatever their initial idea was, obviously uh, they fell well short of that goal. So, yeah, let me know what you think about these comments from Reggie. And, uh, you know, go down to the description below, or go down to the description, go down to the comment section and, and, and type away and let me know, what do you think? You know, is Nintendo this big innovative company, or are they just um, a big risk taker that takes advantage of opportunities that no one else seems to be able to recognize but them? Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Rumpeljance from Nintendo Prime. If you want to support the content we do here, if you go down to the description, we have a link to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $1 a month, you get access to Patreon-exclusive posts and a special access and a special, uh, I don't know, what is it called? A special role, I suppose, on Discord, on our Discord server, where you get colored. You also get the ability to private message me. Um, and get in contact with me in, in many different ways on Discord, which is awesome. It gives you a direct line to me for $5 a month. You get that plus early access to the podcast for $20 a month. You get to be on an episode of the Nintendo Prime Podcast plus all the previous rewards. Really cool stuff. Support us if you can. I'm really trying to get uh, to our second stretch goal, which involves a live news show that I'm really hoping to drive some excitement for as we move further in the year. Otherwise, folks, if you like this video or you can't support us, in any possible way. Just give the video a like, share it to your friends, subscribe to our channel. That's really the most important thing. And I will catch you in the next one.